Welcome to Einheim. This is <laughs> glitching out a bit, beg your pardon. Just get it running. So um this is come on. Multi year episode, probably years eighty two, eighty three, maybe eighty four. Um, given that we're looking at completing the last of the Steam achievements. One being Defender, which is killing fifty wild animals, you know, whilst they're in your pastures trying to eat your chickens and whatever. Um got up to 47 out of 50 as it as it turns out so i would imagine hopefully i can get three this year i mean you know be a bit of a lean year if not um and the last of the steam achievements is of course 2000 population uh we have 1528 spaces with a huge amount of new people coming through so uh other than sorry beg your pardon so there are blueprints laid all over the place, as you can see. Oh, let's just tidy that one up. All of the blueprints for the hostels have the resources already in place, so they're all ready to go. Got a block of them there, of course, as you can see. And then on the very far side of the village, there's one in the middle there, and this great big block of them here. And that, between those two sides, should give me enough spaces for over 2,000 residents. So, I don't know, that's going to be a couple of years at least, isn't it? Probably, I don't know, might, might get to it this episode, third year perhaps, but probably not being realistic. Um, I've been just, oh, donkey farm blueprint there, ready for when the building season starts. I've just been extending the pavements along here. Um, I had to be very careful and nurse the um, AI so it only gave me builders from. You better not change. Yeah, there you go. From these three houses here, or three hostels, sorry, here. So all of them, all of the builders come from there. So they, they've only got to go backwards and forwards. Uh, and when I'm laying the blueprint for the next batch of pavements um, the labourers available carry the stone so that's fabulous and get a bit low on pack mules hence me wanting to build another donkey farm just because I've got so many um, donkey farms spread around the settlement this size as you can imagine to keep the resources moving around um, I think at some point probably before I start the big run up to 2000 I've just got to check that all of, the, all of the trade routes are okay and as they should be because it's, it's probably got away from me as I've been expanding out here the last time I tidied the trade routes up I don't think this whole section existed so there'll be various obsolete trade routes I would imagine so that's moving all oh yeah no that was alright moving all from the market when I created it to there because I needed some for these buildings up here uh, so vegetable vegetables, yeah, okay. Um, I'm probably just, I mean, I've got an enormous number of fields. Basically, all of the fields along this entire length of the wall, from right at the end there, through to there, some of those areas of these, what was that, five orchards in the sort of middle here, so that I'm waiting to get rid of. But they're all potato fields. <laughs> I've got a couple here as well, I think. So I'm producing enormous amounts of potatoes, but I guess they're being used like mad on the uh, vegetable pies, which is very handy. Because as I mentioned before, I'm stockpiling the fruit and veg pies. Oh, that's struggling. Charcoal's starting to fade quite heavily, I notice. And I've um, left this section here for more kilns. This is a new area of sawmills and kilns. Um, specifically to um, produce for this area so I don't keep having to ship them from the main area somewhere across this wasteland of fields um, mainly because in the winter I'm losing quite a few people to hypothermia caravanners especially uh, again you know somebody say working in the caravan here is living in the far bloody corner and stupid things like that but anyway um, you know you work around it you get around it 
Uh, 12. Keeping an eye on the builders for when I can lay my next little batch of pavements, which I think I'm about to do. Get over there. I'm finding as well I'm having to be so careful with them. Um, Mouse clicks on these pavements because I um, I don't so much anymore, but I used to end up with all sorts of weird shapes, sizes, and levels. Um, but I've learned that being ultra slow and ultra careful with it, and just waiting that extra few seconds after you place it before you finalise it, you know, what are you off to? Hmm. That's quite annoying. I suppose the thing to do, bear with me, uh, no, can't use you, can use you. I'm going to get these stairs in place, I think. Um, so that's that, and then we'll want... One of them. Okay, that's interesting. So the donkey farm... Ah, oh, there's the blueprint. Ah, oh, there's the outline of the blueprint. That's good. So I can't go any further with that, actually. Okay, I'm going to have to work out a funky little stairs area here to get people up and down quicker than having to go all the way around there, really. So, um, yeah, all good. So just about to start the growing season, or not far off of starting the growing season in year 82, in what might be the last episode, but probably not. I think three years is a bit too ambitious to um, create 500 new spaces and get 500 new villages in, but you know, I've got the infrastructure, got the resources. So you never know. And as the sun comes up, oh that's a nice view, over my misty iron haven. Here we go. <laughs> so, spring of year 82, um, annoyingly it's just got dark, I have just unpaused all of the buildings, so every single hostel that I've laid the blueprints for, um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry, I'm just, I'm having to keep an eye on the bottom here, because, um, I think I'm at 49 of 50 wild animals. I just killed what should be my 49th one there. So I'm kind of keeping half an eye on it, expecting it to try and catch me out. Now it's dark. But anyway, yeah, what I was going to say was um, I've just unpaused all of the buildings. So all of the hostels that I had laid the blueprints for with all the um, resources in position. As you can see by the number of builders I need, <laughs> they're all go. <laughs> We're at 1,440 residents with 1,528 spaces. Um, yeah, let's see if this breaks the game, I suppose. <laughs> and if not, here we go. It's the charge to 2,000. I'm kind of expecting the Defender thing to be all done by the shouting now, as I use in the other game. Um, but in this instance, I think the Defender... Uh, what's the word? Steam Achievement. Sorry, I'm looking at something else. I think the Defender Steam Achievement is basically done. I've just got to bide my time now, wait for the next one, and I'll see if I can pause it and catch it in time, do the first person thing and record it. Um, I don't know if the... I've got a vague memory of Steam Achievements popping up in the bottom right corner or something when you do them. But, yeah, anyway. I don't know what it is about this misty effect, but I do like this. Oh, and here comes the heavy rain, and it tends to blank everything out, and the fires generally start, so that would be nice then. If I can encourage... No. Let's get a couple more in there. That'll do. I'm probably going to lose some villagers to starvation or something or other now, because somebody working on something over on this side of the settlement will live on that side of the settlement. 
but there it is can't be helped um so yeah let's see if the game either breaks or we get them all built and we can just kind of wait for the charge to start to uh to 2000 <laughs> 2000 villagers here we go well, disasters are consistent if nothing else here come the building fires there's three Four, five, I suppose, all joking aside, with um, more buildings, the statistically the odds of them catching on fire, or more of them catching on fire increase, I guess. It's going to be something as simple as that, I suppose. Let's stick another couple in there. Gonna leave some spare for the deaths that will inevitably occur. Anyway, no point in saying this. This this is nothing new. Lots and lots of building fires in the spring and the autumn are nothing new. And so the hostels go up bit by bit. And the building fires continue, obviously. Did well with the graphics. I know I've said there's no end of times over the course of this um, this playthrough, but they did. You know, credit to them. They did well on the graphics and the modelling. They didn't do a sort of another version where it was rebalanced and um, it's nearly done. Oh, he's done. Well, again, it's from here down to 101. Builders required, I think it was 130 odd to start off with. Right? <laughs> it'll break the game or it'll break the supplies I have. <laughs> One of the two will happen. Well, they're cracking on with it. Very nice chaps and chapesses, thank you very much. Oh, very exciting. Let's have a look at this. Chicken Dine Animal Tag. Please be home, please be home, please be home. Yes, we have a dude, Gabe. You might just be my favourite person in the whole wide world. Kill him. Spear goes out. Wait until that's like that. Um, okay. Well, I'll have to... Um, <laughs> I've got the recording software I use... Um, set to just record the game so if I tab out of the game just to have a look at the um, oh, what do you call it the Steam console see if I've done it or not I'll kill the recording so hold on bear with me right let's have a look oh there we go defender kill 50 wild animals on farms with livestock 1% of players have this achievement I am elite golly and that <laughs> and that leaves just this one Oh, the king is called the king. Okay, reach a population of 2,000, 0.3% of players have this achievement. So, I'm not really surprised because the game doesn't like this number of villagers. But, hey-ho. So, yeah, that's what we're going for. 1,463 down, another 540, no, 537 to go. Here we go. Excuse all the windows I've got open. I'm just keeping a track of what I've got going on. Um... My sacrificial, mm, my um, sacrificial pasture and coop are being demolished. All the lighting around it is being demolished. Um, I can now build oh, one of these orchards finished. So I delete, de destroyed that, deleted, destroy that, and I'm putting two fields in the place. Just get that going as well. Got um, watchtowers and the. The last of the um, sorry, it's got a bit laggy again. There we go. Um, last of the wall sections and watchtowers going in in the very corner over there as I'm um, kind of peeling the land back. Didn't need it in the end, so I might as well destroy it. Talking of which, I'll get that on the go as well while I'm here. 
is one of the fields done. Not that I need it this year, but you know. Good that it's done. Not really overly worried about how this looks, I just uh Right. I have to wait for the lag to finish. Otherwise it throws a huge strop at me. I suppose also I better keep an eye on the fields now. I've been letting them run and double up. So as many of the crops in the fields as possible, I'm just, you know, letting them um, run twice. Like all these ones. So yeah, um, <coughs> the point of this being that, there you go, that magic little finger, uh, figure, finger, finger on the left, figure on the right, 2014 spaces. So now I just let it run. Oh god. <laughs> it's really, really buggy. <laughs> okay, oh no. That's alright. Good, that let me do it that time. Yeah, so um 2014 spaces. Now apart from uh essentially just keeping all the resources intact really. Um is what I shall have to do. I'll finish recording as quickly as I can and I'll start paying attention to these. All the crops are starting to finish off now. There's one I missed. And the two I've just built. There's another one I missed. Hmm. That one's just restarted. Annoying. Uh, yeah, so Let's get rid of that as well. So now, other than just keeping an eye on the resource levels, we just let it run. And behold, we shall have, at some point in the next couple of years, I guess, 2,000 residents. As we start another year, year 83 is just begun. Right, so we had a big update to all the new buildings Ooh, steady so they've all been recognized as existing by the game Let's wait for this to finish messing around so all 2014 spaces now exist to grow into we're off. So the last of the Steam achievements to reach 2,000 population, and I now know it's called The King, because I'm very clever, is on. So, from this point onwards, I am simply marshalling the resources and trying to not kill too many of them, or not let too many of them die from hypothermia and starvation when they're allocated, you know, activities on the opposite end of the settlement from where they live. Hmm. So I think I've got enough of everything to see them through to the end. Uh, got enough charcoal to keep them warm. What is that? Somebody died. Got enough clothing. Got enough tools. Got enough resources to make the clothing. Got enough um, cast iron and resources to make the tools. I have... Uh, these ore mines over here to provide ore into that warehouse there and then a caravan stables over there moving the ore to that warehouse there and then the ore can be used along with the charcoal to make cast iron stop it a bit low on charcoal in there. And the castle smithies can then use all of the above from these two places to make tools. Uh, I have three caravan stables. Churning out bubby donkeys like they're going out of fashion. Just got to keep them topped up really. No, that doesn't want any. I've done that one. 
that one right okay <coughs> yeah got the original two donkey farms down there and a new one in the very far corner to hopefully provide enough bubby donkeys for oh, steady what are you doing yeah so i just used all of the ones that were in there to provide enough bubby donkeys for the caravan stables over on this side in this area uh, i am apparently keeping up with flour the demand on flour that's being used in the pies and the pies that are being made in the <laughs> What is that, 107 bakeries, based on there being 214 bakers? Hmm. The pack mule died in sympathy for the child. Uh, I have plenty of resources that I can get into the markets and trade off for anything that I happen to get screamingly short of. Uh, I've got enough oats and enough grass to keep um, my coops and pastures fed and stocked up so the animals don't die and the animals can provide me with milk and eggs that goes towards the bakeries so I think that's everything done um, I'm gonna keep on um, chopping down trees because I do need logs to make firewood and firewood to convert into charcoal so I'll carry on with the four foresters villages that exist in the middle of the island up there uh, so yeah, I think I've got everything covered. Famous last words. <clears throat> and even if I do start falling behind on fruit pies and vegetable pies, I mean, how long is it going to take for all oh, 1,505? There we go. You saw it here. I completely missed the 1,500 being reached. I mean, how many years is it going to take to add 500 villagers into the mix? Even if I start running out, I've got 80 odd thousand of each pie. They're the only two things. They're the tier four, is it? Food that they're eating. Oh, I'm thinking about something. Um, so that's okay. So everybody is just eating fruit pies and vegetable pies and using charcoal to keep warm and using tools and using warm clothing. So I think I've got those five items that account for everything they need covered. Or everything the villagers need directly anyway covered. Um, yeah, I don't think there's much else to say really. We'll just kind of sit here and wait and watch the population go up and make sure the resources don't fall off the bottom of a cliff and see when we get to 2,000 population. Here we go. On the plus side, 1,590 and it's only early summer so it's really been dumping the people in the system. On the minus side, I've had my first proper outbreak of rabies. Yeah, an entire field, I think, this field probably, of um, villagers <laughs> all came down with rabies. I've been looking around to see if they spread it to anyone else, but I haven't found anyone yet. Still can't. But yeah, look at that. Is it seven of nine? Seven people? <laughs> Seven and nine, wasn't that the Star Trek Borg woman? Um, something like that. Yeah, seven people with rabies, eh? I am seriously unhealthy. But, yeah, while I'm here, um, I've just been moving around all of the um, building products, so all of the uh, ore is kind of heading down to here. I'm not going to need it all, but I'm sending it all down there because I've got no use for it elsewhere. And I'm distributing the logs into warehouses next to, or near closest to sawmills. I think there's three areas, four areas that I'm producing charcoal, logs into firewood in sawmills and firewood into charcoal in kilns. One's there, come here, another's there, there's one there. Uh, I've got them there as well, but I don't think I've got any sawmills around here from memory. Yeah. And um, the other one over here, in the New World. Yes. Rabies. Year 84, here we are. So, I've massively simplified my work anyway. <laughs> I've just left permanent villages 
in the fish farms, in all of these professions. Um, pretty much everything. Caravan stables, furnaces, sawmills, everything. Um, even the schools are massively overpopulated with teachers. I've, I've got so many people now that... Um, I'm just kind of uh, letting the AI... Ooh. That's better. Sorry, a bit of a lag. Um, letting the AI do its thing and just simplifying everything. So giving it less of an opportunity to, you know, use somebody from the far side of the moon to do a job down here. Um, just building a new castle barn down here and I had to manually walk the two builders from the, you know, the um, nearest uh, hostel. Not a house, that's a hostel. So they can just get on with it and get it done without dying. Um, other than that, I've just been playing, you know, tweaking the distribution of the pies and uh, the charcoal and the tools and the clothes so that nobody has to go walking around in the middle of winter looking for something. Um, and essentially from here on in, I'm, I'm just letting it run as I've said before. Look at that beast. <laughs> Space for 2000 and we're at 789. So, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know, where is it likely to... Where's me accountant's house? I've got one over here somewhere, haven't I? No, it's down there. There we go. Um, can't do anything shorter. Yeah, annoyingly, I can't really gauge how many there are. I should have really written it down. Um, so we need, what, 208 now? New villages. Uh, to hit the 2000 and to have completed my objective and therefore the series, really. So, might be year 84, possibly into year 85. Um, and I'll just do more of the same, really. I'll, um... Yeah, I mean, everything, absolutely everything I've got covered in terms of resources. Um, the pies are still going up incredibly. Hmm, definitely got the production figures okay on those. <laughs> So, by the time we reach 2000, I won't, won't have run out of pies or anything. I'm in, you know, good shape. So, I'll just let the game sort itself out. And let it run to 2000. I think when when the... Um, uh, when we're in the growing season, so it's not snowy, I'll probably have a little walk around. See if I can grab a couple of teenagers, take over their bodies. Not the best way to put it, perhaps, with hindsight. And um, have a wander around the village without killing them or them dying from starvation in the process. Because there's an awful lot to see. And it's a big old beast. Yeah, cool. So, um, I'll wait till the uh, summer, probably maybe spring gets here when there's no rains or anything and we'll have a little wander around, eh? Here we are. Ooh, steady on there. Taking over one of my little mini dudes. He's nice and, um, oh, God, of course I can't do that. Top left corner, his hunger. Lost, lost the plot there. Um, he's well fed, so we can take him over with confidence. So we're on the outside of the village now, looking up into the um, Forester's village areas. So I've laid paths around so the foresters can just be a little more efficient, really. Um, each of the, There are four of these little foresters' villages, as I just decided to name them randomly. Um, because that just filled the space. Oh, hello. What are you doing? I guess that's the hunter looking at her fabulous bow. You know, play. Um, so yeah, um, each of these these small houses for, yeah, for five residents, one hunter for foresters um, in a sort of square shape. So between them they cover the entire area um, and the centre of all the circles of the um, foresters lodges converges here. So this this is the the village itself is smack bang in the middle of the four. Each has a barn, each has a warehouse, each has a bathhouse for happiness. And as I mentioned, a hunter. 
Uh, so yeah, got four of those along the outside. Caravan stable routes, providing them with everything they need and also gathering the wood and the heat which they inevitably collect. So that's that little chap. Let's start over here. So this is the, no, actually start of the old town. That would make sense. Yeah. Would make sense, wouldn't it? Yeah, start of rain. Um, <laughs> as fabulous as it looks, I'll wait until the rain stops to start the sort of tour of the village. Makes sense, so we can see better. And meet Grayson. Our latest little sproglet. I'm going to just take over and have a bit of a mooch around. So which way's which? Right, so this is kind of the old, the old town area where the very first settlement was. Which is probably down there somewhere now. So there's the outside wall. It goes out to the fields and the foresters' villages. And these are some. This is a batch of the newer hostels that I've recently built. And I can't get out that way. <laughs> you can tell I just threw them in. Didn't bother about space in. <laughs> so yeah, these are all um, foresters' villages. Uh, bath houses and pyres and wells are all over the place. Uh, just to yeah, just to keep everyone happy and working more efficiently. More hostels up there. Um, the um, pies are coarse for when people snuff it, so reduce the chances of plague, hopefully. This little top section here that we're in is sort of self-contained. That was the old barn where we had those five ports along there. Um, now it just serves as a barn for uh, providing provisions for these hostels, really. And we're on to an upper level. Again, this is a part of the old, the old town. Left a bit of room there, didn't do anything with it. Oh, it's because there's a market there, isn't it? That's a market, one of the many. Got half a dozen markets dotted around. Yeah, so down into the fish farm area, on the edge of the settlement. Got 30 odd, 39 I think it is, fish farms. One of the batches of um, charcoal uh, production area, I guess you'd call it. All the kiln is chugging her in away. Yeah, this is definitely into the old town. One of the many st caravan stables I've got going around. This stable is clearly up to date with its um, with its trade routes because they're all just standing around looking fabulous. Then uh, we go down to this bottom. Yeah, he's, he's all right. He's not starving, is he? So he's got plenty of food in the top right, the top left corner. So then we're down to this sort of area that's predominantly for production um, of clothes and tools and as such I've got these are all sheep farms sheep pastures all the way along here uh, to provide wool for the weavers I've got their own little self-contained area for kilners um, which partly provides charcoal for the what they call castle smithies which are those things behind it there um, and partly for charcoal for the villagers to keep warm. These are these two enormous flax fields. Oh yeah, I never did put that, fill that gap in. There's a scarecrow there, I don't know, I'll leave it now, too late. So um, yeah, this is the very, very edge of the village. That was where those five uh, ore mines were and the warehouse there, they've all been emptied and demolished now. So I've got more than enough ore to see me through to the end. Uh, where are we going? He's still okay for food for the time being. Can't get by there. Uh, can we get by there? Yes, we can. Bob the builder. So, <laughs> so these are the weavers. I think we're into um, kind of weavers areas behind here, behind the loads of hostels for population to provide permanent workers. Oh, here's the weavers. Block of eight. I think I've got weavers here. Uh, and then the windmills begin. There's a load of fields here that are specifically to provide um, now oats, or yeah, is it grass? Whatever it is for the um, sheep. They did provide a variety of things before, but no good effect. As the mist comes down and night falls in. So yeah, that's that bit of the settlement. I'd better run this chap back, give him a fighting chance of getting back. Blow his all. 
Oh, I can't, I can't get up there. Completely blind. I'll keep going until I hit something. That'll do. Um, so here, yeah, I'll carry on with the tour once daylight returns, and we'll um, pick up the sort of middle section. What was the first of the areas we moved into all those years ago? Uh, fun looking around for a teenager to take over for this one. So let's have a look at this um, middle section. <coughs> so that was the well, the second phase of development once we'd filled the area of the old town. We started heading west and developed this area originally for housing and other such things, but it turned <laughs> turned into the yeah good she's not hungry. Turned into the area for bakeries. Oh lord, where are you, mate? There we go. Yeah, here we go. So, um, by way of orientation, that leads out of the settlement into the forest up there. Might as well go up that way, actually. So this is where the bakeries start. Blocks and blocks and blocks of bakeries. Supported by caravan stables and bathhouses and storage areas and all sorts of gubbins like that, but ultimately a massive bakery area and that great big block of uh, oh there's another Kilners area for charcoal that block of windmills that stretches all the way along that uh, sort of seafront was the original batch of windmills that weren't quite mm, come on lag in weren't quite capable of keeping up with demand so we ended up building shed loads more and this was the point where I was playing around with terraforming and pavements and stairs and things like that. Because I liked the look of going up and down. Great big open space there. Still more bakeries, caravan stables, another Kilners area. And back out to the wall, leading out to the um, fields in the forest as villagers. Still in the bakery, absolutely masses of bakeries. Look at that. As far as the eye can see. Nice effect. I do like the um, aesthetics, as I keep saying, of this game. Another nice vista. I managed to create these walkthroughs from the... Um, I think they're called castle gates, aren't they? From that section of wall all the way down to the coast, just to make it look nice and, you know... I don't suppose they particularly care if they have to go slightly bent in the way they walk, but I do. And then, this be, this was originally the edge of the settlement until I decided to go for it and um, go for larger numbers of population and steam achievements and things. So this became what is really the final, the west section of, of the settlement. So I'll find another willing teenager to take over for that one. There's all the orchards. My lamp post looking fabulous. Right, finally, for the, the west section, the new section. Let's see where this dude is. Good. Samantha, rather. Sorry, Samantha. Called you a dude. You don't smell a funnel. Well, bloody way out. Don't smell of frogs and snails and puppy dogs' tails and things. And this became <laughs> the very cramped Shakespearean area really where I just squeezed loads and loads of hostels in so yeah by way of um, navigating your way around here's the outside wall there's the keep up there that was um, stuck in for research hmm yeah loads of hostels squished in Oh, somebody's died. ta -da. Thanks for playing. Um, so yeah, there was originally a settlement wall here, but I ended up demolishing it and, um, you know, and decided to, to head west. And... <laughs> hence it got a bit messy in terms of the um, terraforming with the pavements, but I quite like the effect. All the way down there to where the windmills are. 
and various fields and god knows what else have existed in this section now but there's a great big block of orchards nice neat lines of lemon trees cherries over there I think or elderberries whatever they are uh, put the brakes on Ooh, good stave um, what are those ones I guess they're don't know, oranges maybe Possibly elderberries, yeah, there they are. Elderberries, elderberries. We like saying that word. And apples. So yeah, nice neat lines of um, trees. I suppose if I'd have had, had the mod, because there's a mod where you can take the fences away, that would be quite nice. Hmm. And then the, a huge block of fields to provide um, vegetables and other things ready for the massive expansion once 2,000 population became one of the objectives. You squished a few things in there. So there we go into this enormous bank of windmills. Oh, and the donkey caravan stable things. So houses are company in support. Caravan stables, bathhouses, storage areas, all the usual stuff. Loads of pyres and wells. Pyres for the dead, wells for the, for the fires because I've got disasters on. And hasn't that been a delight? And then this windmill city. Far as the eye can see. That blipping in the background is not annoying, is it? Got so many people now that the people dying and the pack mules dying just seems to be a constant factor, really. Yeah, good modelling, as I say repeatedly. Good modelling. Fair dues. However annoying the bugs might be. And then is the local area for sawmills and um, kilners to provide their charcoal. Then I ended up with a bit of space, so I stuck a couple of um, oat fields in here for the... What, one oat and one grass, I think, for these two blocks of um, chicken coops and cow pastures. to provide milk and eggs for the bakeries and also there's, there's a few new bakeries up there that we'll come to in a minute and then I started messing around with stairs again because I quite enjoyed playing so um, I created these might as well go and have a look created these kind of um, makes me think of Star Wars for some reason that shape and I can't think why must have been a battleship or battle fleet or somewhere other that had that so um, from the castle gate, each of those castle gate, the way goes, the runway goes straight down to one of these and the villagers can go either way and a third and final donkey farm to provide donkeys for this section of the, well the caravan stables in this section of the village another new block of bakeries one caravan stables dotted on the end that I'm not actually using at the minute just put it there because I thought I might need to move resources around There we go, there's the westward section. And although I extended out this far with the intention of putting fields in if I needed it, um, didn't need to come out this far in the end. But nevertheless, still put some um, uh, pyres there, because people will still die in this area, of course. And with that in mind, uh, there's probably an exit here somewhere. Oh, well, that was clever. I didn't mean to do that. Can I go back out and try again? Do you mind? I'm being thick. Yeah, and that is the third and final section of this, to what will become a 2,000 population settlement. With hindsight, I think I'd have gone squarer rather than oblong, but then I didn't plan to do 2,000, so I didn't really plan out the the structure of the city that well with hindsight. Get rid of that. Yeah, so that is Ironhaven with 1,846 souls, 154, <laughs> 154 more, and we'll be at the magic 2,000. Tick off the very final Steam achievement and become the king. 
become the 0.3% of players who achieve the king. Not really surprising given how buggy it is and how many mods you need just to be able to kind of do it, you know? But anyway, it's good. So yeah, there we are, Rhinehaven. Into year 85 we go. Um, population, I thought I was going to get there at one point. It was up at about 1930. And then loads of people starved to death and died from hypothermia. And I'd, I'd already cleared all the professions out, so you know, it's just, just the AI. I had raiders, as you can see, and all that sort of stuff. Not that they caused a great problem. Building fires were a bit of a nuisance. So I'm going to let this run and just get to the 2000 now and do it all in one episode. So I'll be back in a bit. Iron Haven has <coughs> definitely been burning this year, though. <laughs> All these building fires just never ending. Uh, right, so 1952, so we're into the last. Let's just watch these little ants. Put the fire down. Into the last 50. That's because I've got them too close together, I guess. They're catching fire to each other. Uh, and uh, as you can also see from the professions window, I've taken everyone out of everything. We've done no growing this year. I'm not making tools or clothes or absolutely anything. I've just got herdsmen in, um, you know, the pastures and what have you. Windmillers, bakers and the caravanners. And that's it. And to try and uh, reduce the chances of people dying. And also the game being buggy, really. So it... Bloody hell. Look at that. <laughs> So it, you know, so it has a decent go. Um, oh, that noise is getting on my nerves now. Go away. <laughs> um, all the trade routes, as you can see, have been tidied up massively. Um, so the caravanners that are in, I've just removed loads of them. Um, so there's just nothing for them to do, and... So far, I don't think I've lost anyone this year to starvation, or since, you know, since the, yeah, since the change, since I've removed all the professions. Been a couple of people that have popped up hungry on this bar on the left here. Um, but, yeah, all right, they've got to their homes in time, so here we go with the last 50. The population actually went backwards quite significantly over the winter. People keeling, especially caravanners, from um, keeling over and snuffing it from hypothermia and starvation, um, so I ended up taking all the caravanners out <laughs> and of, of the profession and just, you know, so nobody had an excuse really. Um, and that slowed down the rate of descent and now we're on the rise again. Oh, he says that. Now we're on the rise again, so into the 1970s. Getting closer. Oh, another huge batch of building fires, as you can see over there. Nothing there, because I think half a dozen of them were burnt, but as in destroyed, you know. But the game is determined to stop me doing anything. It's got the ump with me, I think. <laughs> and they've all been put out. So it goes on. And as you can see, the population slid back again. <laughs> and it now it's grown. <laughs> We're into the fall of year 87 now. And I've had quite a lot of... Um, Full starts and messing around with the population. We're up to 1,998. The goal being 2,000, of course, so two more. Um, I hit a glass ceiling, speed it up a little bit, a while back, which I'm um, presumably was just one of the times when the AI dumped a large number of people in the system. Population, you know, recognised new houses I'd built. Um, and therefore the population went through the roof and therefore people died of old age in great big chunks kind of the baby boomers of Ironhaven if you like um, so yeah I was, I was um, stuck in the 1960s, 1970s I think for quite a while not a very good place to be stuck in the 1970s if you know what I mean and you live in Britain <laughs> especially if it involves DJs or entertainers <laughs> but although I was stuck there I, I sort of had a mess around and I built a few new houses a, an extra hostel and a couple of new houses 
Oh, there they are. There's the two new houses. Because I thought, you know, increased chance of babies and stuff like that. Price started going down. Year 86, I didn't bother doing any growing. I just had it on speed 10 with nobody doing anything. But then I had to spend ages tidying up. <laughs> this, oh, there we go. Another one just died. Two babies. One died. 1997 now. Um, down in the bottom corner, of course. And the population being just up here. So yeah, so this year I've had to do a load of growing because uh, some of the resources were starting to get a bit low. Um, loads of chickens starved to death because I'd taken all the caravans offline, the stables offline, all the roots. Sorry, the caravan stable roots. And I ended up with no oats up here because I hadn't done any growing here the previous summer. Silly boy. Live and learn. So yeah, this year I'm kind of stocked up on, you know, things like me oats. I'm getting me oats. Ha 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 and other such stuff like that um, built quite a few more about another six seven eight new bakeries dotted them around here and a couple of barns for storage and stuff 1998 here we go again just keeps hovering around this sort of m between about 1993 and 1996 so 1998 is the highest it's been and now I just kind of wait, let's ramp, ramp it up a bit. 1997. Come on, come on, come on. Three more, three more, three more. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Nineteen ninety-six, nineteen ninety-seven. See what I mean? It's just can't get over this bloody glass ceiling. I want to get over it before the um, before the minuses start, because every winter now I'm losing ludicrous numbers of people to hypothermia and starvation. Even when I'm not doing anything. You know, I kind of left the mills and the bakeries and um, I think it was just them actually going. 1997. Ah, oh dear. Gosh, this is painful. Please get on with it. 1998. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. 1999. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, you... Fucker. <laughs> oh, this isn't funny anymore. I want to go home and take my ball. Actually, let's just get them all out of the field. Sorry, I can't be asked. Uh, fields. Zero. I'll leave the others doing their stuff. 1997 for crying out loud. Come on. Come on. Speed 10 now. Just just do it. Just do it. You know you want to. I could be here for ages recording this, couldn't I? It's just no... 1998, 1997. Just... <laughs> Child died during birth. 1997, 1998. 1999. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on! You fuck go on, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Come on, please. Please, I wanna stop. Please. Yes! Oh, you saw that, didn't you? There was two thousand there just for a split second. <laughs> when that baby was born Which we can't see hasn't got a name. And then two people died, but I think that's a victory, don't you? I think you did see it, didn't you? Tell me you saw it, for God's sake. <laughs> I think now I'm going to pause the game, back out, and um, <laughs> see what the Steam console says, because I know I saw 2000 for the briefest of seconds. So, oh, back in a sec. Oh, thank fuck for that. <laughs> <laughs> the king, I am the king. I am in the 0.3% of players who have this achievement. 
I've unlocked all achievements. There are none left to do on Life is Feudal Forest Village. Not that I play this game to do the achievements, but you saw it here. It's done. <laughs> Excellent. <sighs> and brief. So, here we have Ironhaven. Home for 2,000 souls. Defender against 50 wild animals. The home of Magellan, who sent forth 50 expeditions from ports and whatever other uh, Steam achievements I've done that I didn't notice because I didn't really play this game for that sort of thing. Nevertheless, here she is. My home in life is feudal for, I don't know, the last couple of months or a few months, whatever it's been. Massively developed pavement areas, which is a first for me. That was quite an adventure. Quite enjoyed that. Bloody painful, but quite enjoyed it on the whole. Bit of a beast. Shame the game isn't designed for you know this sort of number of population because otherwise I would play on. But um, at this stage, that's that's enough. Two thousand is good. I think we've uh, we've hit the glass ceiling now, so that'll do very nicely. So on that note, that's a bit of fun farewell to Ironhaven. I hope you've enjoyed watching it. I've certainly enjoyed playing it. Other than the annoyances, two thirds of the way through, that I think were probably fairly clear. Nevertheless, lovely little game. Thoroughly enjoyed this one, and um, thanks very much for watching. Alright, ta-da.